Hey everybody and welcome back to my series of tutorials on Krypton and Aquadancer. This one will be on Zone 2. It will have everything you need from uh, the enemy patterns, the mini bosses, and um, I'll pick one boss, so that will be Death Metal to do a deep dive into. And then I'll end with the uh, full run through of Zone 2 so you can see how everything's put into practice. So just like last time, we'll start with the low threat enemies. These are the enemies that are least likely to cause you damage, and when they do cause damage, it's not as much as the other ones. They tend to have the easiest patterns as well to recognize, so you generally shouldn't need to prioritize these ones too much. So starting off, we have the white armored skeleton. This guy is just like the regular skeleton, except he holds a shield. So you can either attack him from the side, or break the shield, and then just kill him like you would kill a normal skeleton. With the white skeleton, the shield only has 1 HP, so you can always break it with every weapon. But the yellow and black skeletons, uh, their shields have 2 and 3 HP respectively, so you'll need more damage if you want to break the shield. This is why I would generally recommend uh, attacking from the side, which I do demonstrate uh, in this clip quite a bit. It's just a bit more consistent, um, but you can also break the shield. Um, the most important thing to note if you do break the shield is that the skeleton will move back and it will immediately want to attack again, so if you move forward twice you will take damage. So if you're going to do that you'll need to cancel uh, the beat by either stalling with a wall or by uh, moving back and then moving forward again. Next up we have the white skeleton mage. This guy can be particularly troubling when paired with other enemies, but on his own is generally not too bad to deal with. So he'll move every other beat, and he'll also try to cast his wind spell every other beat. Um, you can tell that he's about to do this because the top of his staff will turn purple, um, and if you stay in his line of sight and move towards him, uh, you will be pulled towards him with the wind spell. Um, so do be careful of that, especially if you're playing Monk, uh, he'll often blow you into money and will kill you. So you can take damage from this guy if you move towards him, like I just did there, um, as he's about to attack, uh, but otherwise he's not too bad, just be careful of the wind spell and um, make sure that you can desync yourself using walls or by moving back and forward. Now we're going to take a look at the mole. Um, this guy is not too bad to deal with. Um, what he does is he'll follow you around um, underground, so you can't attack him while he's uh, burrowing. But um, if you approach him uh, on the right beat, he will pop out of the ground. If you find that you're approaching him and he's not coming out of um, his burrowing, then you'll need to stall the beat, and then he will do so. You can move into him, but this will lose you the, uh, the beat, the groove chain. Um, you'll lose your coin multiplier by doing that, so it's better to stall by hitting a wall or um, doing any other action to waste one beat. Next up we have the War Mimic. Um, this guy's not too bad to deal with. Um, he will replace some walls in the environment. He won't ever spawn out in the open like this. Um, the way you need to deal with him is you need to move right up towards him and then move away. Uh, if you try and attack the beat that you move up towards him, uh, he will attack first and you'll get hit. So you need to move away and he'll start following you and then you can attack him there and he'll die in one beat. And now we have the clone. The clone is not too scary to deal with. The way they work is they mimic the moves that you do uh, in reverse. So you can see how I'm sort of dancing around them there. Um, if you find that you can't attack the clone, if you sort of get stuck in the sort of diagonal thing, you need to basically push the clone or yourself into the wall to uh, basically realign yourselves and then you can go and attack it. If you have a two range weapon this becomes a lot easier um, and if you try and move towards it like I just did there you will take damage instead so just make sure that you realign yourself using the environment and then when it's safe to do so you can attack the mimic. Let's take a look at the white now. Um, the white is the zone 2 spirit, um, and the only way it differs from the spirit in zone 1 is that it can move through walls, it uh, has the uh, phasing ability. Um, this doesn't change too much, honestly, um, just treat it like you treat a normal um, uh, spirit. Um, just if you can't attack it on that beat, if you're one beat away from it, just stall and uh, then just attack it, it dies in one hit. Just be careful because it can attack you through walls and you can't attack it through a wall. So if it's sort of chasing you through the walls, just move away from the walls and then you'll be able to kill it in the open.
and with that you should have a better understanding of the lower threat enemies in zone 2. Let's take a look at the medium threat enemies. These guys are a fair bit deadlier than the low threat enemies. Um, they often have more complicated patterns and uh, often deal more damage than the low threat enemies as well. So when you're dealing with these guys in a group, try to prioritize them over the low threat enemies. Uh, it's generally a good strategy to avoid taking damage. Starting us off in the medium threat category is the yellow armored skeleton. This guy moves in exactly the same ways as the white skeleton, but the shield requires two hits to break and the skeleton has two HP as well. So if you try and attack the shield with one damage, it won't break, so this leaves the only viable option to be attacking from the side, unless you have more damage. So what you need to do is, because it will move every other beat, you need to wait until you can safely attack it from the side, and then its head will pop off and you don't need to worry about it attacking you after that. So just wait and then try and move to the side, because if you move towards it, then you will take damage. So just run alongside it, pop the head off, and then go and kill it. Continuing the skeleton theme, we have the yellow skeleton mage. This guy behaves exactly like the white skeleton, except he has two HP. This does complicate matters a bit. Um, if you only have one damage, uh, it makes it a bit more annoying to kill him. So the best way to do so is you can let him uh, use his wind spell and then you can attack him again. Um, you can attack him twice immediately and that will kill him because he won't have the chance to attack again. Or you can let him use his wind spell, then move away, and you can do this indefinitely. Uh, and then whenever you're ready you can kill him. I wouldn't recommend stalling for too long like I just did there. It's better to just kill him immediately because as I've said before, he is quite dangerous in a group of enemies. So he can sort of pull you in directions that you're not expecting. So take care of him quickly. Next we have the white armadillo. God, I hate this guy. He's so annoying. Um, the way he moves is once you cross his line of sight, either sideways or up and down, he will roll at you and he is completely invulnerable uh, in this phase. So you need to wait till he hits a wall uh, and then he'll be available to attack again. You can knock him in other directions um, and he is stunned for several beats after hitting a wall. So you can use that time to easily attack him. The best thing to do is just get him rolling, um, so don't do this by moving straight towards him, make sure there's at least one gap between you, uh, and then let him roll, you can either hit him to a wall or let him hit the wall that he was already going towards, and then once he's stunned, just attack him once and he'll die. Now let's learn about the tar monster, this guy spawns in the pits of tar and mud that appear in zone 2. When you kill him, he'll drop another tile of mud, which is very kind of him. Um, you can see him sort of lurking around, you can also hear him, he has a sort of, he makes a noise when moving through the mud, you can hear this. And he behaves very similarly to the war mimic, all you need to do is move one tile towards him and then move away immediately. If you try and attack him on that beat, he'll pull you into the mud and quickly deal lots of damage, you'll be sort of stuck just like you are with the um, the monkeys that grab your heads in zone 1. So just move up towards him and then move away and attack him. He dies in one hit so he's not too bad. Next up we have the light golem or golem. This guy is tanky, he has 5 HP, but to compensate for this he does move very slowly, only every 3 beats, which gives you plenty of time to attack him. If you do get hit though he does 2 HP, so you need to be very very careful of him. Um, so what you should do is move towards him, attack him for as long as you can until he starts to uh, crouch um, and that means he's going to move on the next beat. So all you have to do, move towards him and then the second that he crouches down, you move away from him and then you can just carry on attacking for three beats. So the best thing to do is just move up towards him at the right time, attack him three times, move away and attack him two more times. If you have a weapon with more damage this becomes significantly easier, so try and prioritize that. Now we have everyone's least favourite, the Blue Mushroom. This guy is annoying. I have lost so many runs to them, and you probably will as well, um, but hopefully less if you're watching this video. So every four beats he will spray spores in every direction adjacent to him, including diagonally, uh, which is why he can trip you up so much, because just out of nowhere you can just get caught in the spores, uh, and it does one heart of damage. Um, the best thing to do is just move side to side, two beats away from him, two, two squares away from him, until he just uses up his ability and then move towards him and attack him and he'll die in one hit. Um, so yeah, just wait until it's safe to move in and then attack him once and he'll die.
And with that, we're through the medium threat enemies, so well done. We've only got the high threat enemies left to cover for regular enemies, and then we'll talk about mini bosses and uh, death metal, the boss. Uh, these guys are the toughest enemies to find in zone 2. You should be very careful of them. Give them the absolute priority when you see them. Try and kill them first, because if you leave them around too long, they've got more chance to deal you damage. First we have the black armored skeletons. These guys are absolutely deserving of being in the high threat tier. They are so difficult. Um, as you can see, you can't break the shield unless you have three damage or more. Um, so I would really just recommend attacking them from the side or learning how to do so because you won't always have three damage to break their shield. Um, the good thing is this is exactly the same pretty much as the yellow skeleton. So if you've learned how to do that, you don't have to change too much when learning this. Um, you just need to be careful that they do attack every other beat and they now have two, they require two hits to pop their head off. So make sure that you're moving towards them just as they move towards you and then you end up next to each other. Then you can attack them twice. Um, they deal so much damage uh, if you move towards them. So just give them lots of time, practice, practice a lot and you'll be fine. Now we have, you guessed it, the Black Skeleton Mage. This one is not too much of a change from the yellow skeleton mage. Um, all you have to do is continue the trick of um, moving away from him just uh, as he's about to attack. You can either move sideways and avoid the wind or you can just move backwards and let him blow you back towards you, him uh, and you just have to do this three times and you'll kill him. This shouldn't be too bad if you've learned the patterns for the white and yellow skeleton mages. You just need to be aware that he has 3 HP and deals even more damage so learn the patterns and try not to get hit. Now we have the yellow armadillos. These guys function exactly the same as the white armadillos but they have 2 HP. So just like with the white ones, um, knock them into a wall or wait for them to hit the wall that they're currently moving towards and attack them twice while they are stunned. Um, if you don't, if you mess up the timing a bit and aren't able to attack it twice, um, just let it roll again and then attack it again once it's finished rolling the second time. It's not worth the risk of um, possibly taking damage by attacking by being too aggressive and attacking twice when you can't. The number one thing to remember is don't move within one square of it like this, otherwise you will take damage. So make sure you're at least one square away when you try and get it to roll, otherwise he'll hit you immediately. Now we move on to the absolute giga tank, the Dark Golem. This guy has 7 HP, so you really need to be careful, um, and he does a boatload of damage, so um, try not to get hit by him, obviously. <laughs> uh, the good news is the patterns are exactly the same as the Light Golem, so all you have to do is do exactly what you do for the Light Golem, but just longer. It just takes a long time to take care of this guy. Um, so once again he moves every three beats, um, so wait till his arms move down, he crouches a bit, and then move away and attack him three times and then repeat. And if you thought the blue mushroom was hard, welcome to hell, because the purple mushroom is maybe one of the hardest enemies in the whole game. Um, it sprouts spores every three beats instead of the blue mushroom's four beats. This makes all the difference. Um, it gives you so much less time to attack him compared to the blue mushroom. Um, so the best thing to do if you have a one range weapon is just move towards him at the right time. So that will be the beat immediately after he shot his spores. Move towards him, attack him once, then move back away from him. And then he'll shoot his spores as you do this. And then you can safely return to within one range of him, attack him once and repeat. So you're sort of weaving in back and forth, um, into range, attacking him once, and heading back out. This is the safest way to take care of him if you have one range. If you have a two range weapon, this completely trivializes the fight against this enemy because you can safely attack him without him being able to attack you back. Well done, you've made it through all the regular enemies and you should now have a better understanding of their movement patterns and how best to take care of them. We're now going to take a look at the bosses that appear in zone 2. There are some Zone 1 bosses that appear in Zone 2 as well, but I won't be covering these, so if you're interested in seeing those as well, I'll leave a link in the description to my Zone 1 video, where you can learn how to take care of things like Red Dragons, which can also appear in this zone. Starting the mini-bosses off, we have the Dark Nightmare. The Dark Nightmare has an effect where it creates a shadow in a two-tile radius around itself, which obfuscates everything in that area. This can make it very difficult to deal with other enemies when the Dark Nightmare is around him. 
um, because you just can't see them. So the best thing to do is to lead him away from other enemies um, and try to deal with him on his own because when he is on his own he's basically a green dragon. He just moves every two beats and has three HP so the best thing to do is hit him and move away and hit and move away which should be a pattern that you're quite familiar with at this point. So the number one thing to be aware of is just be careful of that shadow. It can be very dangerous um, as you can't see the other enemies that are inside it. The stronger version of the Dark Nightmare is the Blood Nightmare. The Blood Nightmare moves in exactly the same ways as the Dark Nightmare, but um, so it's every other beat, but it has a three tile radius of shadow created around him. Um, just like the Dark Nightmare, this is very annoying. Um, so try and lead him away from enemies and deal with him on his own. Um, if you try and take care of the other enemies whilst they're in his shadow, you're going to have a hard time. It's just impossible to see them. Um, so same with the Dark Nightmare. Attack once and move away, and attack and move away. You just have to do this um, four or five times, um, depending on if you have if you hit him twice at the end. Um, yeah, so just take care of him on his own. He's not too bad. Um, just really be careful of the other enemies that can hide in his shadow. Another mini boss you can run into in Zone 2 is the Blue Banshee. The Blue Banshee moves every beat and deafens you after the first hit. This really obscures the music and makes it much harder to hear, um, which can be very deadly. So you want to take her out as soon as you've hit her once. Um, so the best way to deal with this is to hit her and then stall the beat in some way. Uh, the best way to do this is just uh, hitting a wall. Um, so hit once and then hit a wall, hit once and hit a wall, and then you should kill her if you have one damage. If you have a two range weapon, this makes it much easier because you can attack her constantly um, from range. And the green banshee is a stronger version of the blue banshee, but fundamentally the same. All the mechanics are exactly the same except she has 4 HP, so you just need to do the um, stalling method using the wall um, four times instead of three times. Uh, just make sure you don't move towards her when you are when there's one square in between you two, otherwise she will hit you first and you will take one and a half hits of damage. So just if you find yourself one square away, just stall using walls or maybe the war drum, any other item that can stall, and then you'll be able to hit her. And then she'll move back, and then you can stall again and repeat. So that's how to take care of all the mini bosses in Zone 2. With that out of the way, I want to talk a bit about the traps and walls that can appear in Zone 2. One thing you'll find is that there are lots of these mushrooms around in Zone 2. The ones with no orange spots uh, can just be destroyed, they can't damage you at all. But the ones with orange spots will explode after several beats. So if you hit them once and then move away, they'll explode after about four beats. If, if you hit them twice, they'll explode on the spot and deal two hearts of damage. So just don't do that. <laughs> they, they can be used to, um, uh, to explode other things that you need exploding, like maybe uh, crates. Um, but other than that, just hit them once and move away or completely avoid them. Exclusive to the Synchrony DLC, we have the Dice Trap. This can also appear in Zone 1, but I didn't cover it in that video, so I'd like to talk about it here. Um, every beat, the Dice Trap will show a number from 1 to 6 on it, and when you step on it, it will spawn enemies corresponding to the number shown on that beat. These enemies can be from any zone, which makes this trap particularly deadly, so I would avoid it if you, uh, if you can. If you have to step on it, um, just take care of the enemies one by one. Uh, this can also be used to get some more gold on that floor if you really need to buy something. You can get a couple of extra enemies and uh, use the gold to buy what you want. But otherwise I would just avoid it. Beginning in zone 2 and onwards you'll find the Omni Bounce trap. This trap has a completely blank face which is how you can tell it apart from the other traps. Um, what it will do is it will bounce you in any direction that you approach it from. So if you approach it from the top moving downwards, it will bounce you to the bottom. But yeah, it functions exactly the same as a bounce pad except you can pick the direction. It's important to note that the enemies can use the Omni Bounce traps as well, just like with the other bounce traps. So give them a bit of space because you can sort of get hit out of nowhere when an enemy just quickly hops on a trap and catapults across the map and then attacks you, so just be careful of that. Okay, so we've made it to the boss. Uh, in this video I'm going to be covering Death Metal. Death Metal features the fastest song in the game, which can be quite difficult for newer players who aren't used to the speed yet. 
I think once you get used to it though, Death Metal becomes one of the easiest bosses, if not the easiest. That being said though, he is still a challenge, so let's dive into him and learn what we can. Immediately when you enter the boss arena, you'll be greeted by four enemies from your zone. So if you enter it from zone 2, these will be clones. Um, you can choose whether to take these out or not. Um, I'd prefer to, usually, because they can sort of get in the way. Um, but if you, don't, if you don't get rid of them, it's not too much of a problem. Death Metal himself has four phases, and he begins phase one with a shield. Uh, this functions in exactly the same way as those of the armored skeletons from Zone 2. Um, so if you're used to moving around to the side of them, just do the exact same thing here. You can't break down the shield this time, and if you do try to attack from the front, he'll spawn three bats, and this can become very annoying very quickly. So try to attack him from the side, uh, just like you did with the armored skeletons. At the start, he moves every three beats, so this gives you plenty of leeway to attack multiple times. Once you hit him three times, he'll go from 9 HP down to 6 HP, and this will pop his shield off. We'll then begin Phase 2. Once you begin Phase 2, Death Metal will teleport to a random place in the arena, and he'll start moving away from you, so you need to chase him down at this point. Every seven beats, I believe, he will raise his hand and spawn enemies. So, the quicker you get to him, the less likely he is to do this attack because um, if you hit him, it'll reset it and he'll teleport to another place in the arena. So that's what phase 2 is all about. Run around, find him, hit him, and then he'll teleport and chase him down again. Phase 3 begins when Death Metal has 4 HP left, and it lasts until he has 2 HP left. This phase functions pretty much the same as phase 2. He'll run away from you and spawn enemies um, after some time. Uh, the enemies will just be slightly harder than in uh, the previous phase. Uh, I would recommend just chasing him down at this point, ignore the enemies he spawns because if you try and kill them he's just going to spawn more, so just make a beeline for him and hit him and then wherever he teleports to start running for that. Phase 4 begins when Death Metal has 2 HP left. At this point he'll move every beat and he'll try and line himself up with you on the same tile horizontally. After 4 beats he'll raise his arm and shout breathe in fire. <laughs> and if you don't attack him within 4 more beats um, he will shoot a fireball sideways. Um, so once he stays still, try and get off that line because you're just risking getting hit by the fireball if you're not prepared in time to move out of the way. Um, the, sa the strategy is the same as phase 2 and 3, just hunt him down and hit him. Uh, try and do that as quickly as possible, but if you don't have time to get, him, get to him before he hits the fireball, just take your time, move out of the way, let him do his fireball attack and then carry on and then you'll be able to reach him before he does his next attack. So, with that out of the way, you should have all the tools you need to beat Zone 2 in its entirety. Don't worry if you can't do it yet, it is a much harder zone than Zone 1. Um, take your time, learn the enemy patterns, come back to this video if you need to, to uh, revise anything. Uh, but keep practicing, and you will beat it eventually. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, what I'd like to do now is take you through a Zone 2 playthrough in its entirety that I did uh, myself, uh, using only the base dagger. Um, I'll be talking through what was going through my head at the time, and hopefully this will put everything into practice and you'll be able to see um, what a complete Zone 2 playthrough looks like. So let's get started. First off I see these enemies over to the side so I'm going to quickly move in and kill the Mushroom when he's not attacking. Three hits on the Golem then move away. Um, I can trap the clone over there. Let's go quickly check out the shop. I'm not quite sure why because I'm doing this whole thing without any items. Just a habit I guess. Um, I tried to see if there was anything behind those walls because often you can skip large areas of um, zone 2 by looking through walls. So, you see what I mean? That, like, when I said the, the uh, mage attack can really throw you off, it, it throws you into some weird locations I was not expecting to be there. Um, I'm just going to ignore that clone and um, take care of the armadillo before I move in to uh, kill the mushroom. That one can just be killed with the, um, the bomb trap. I um, don't need to do that whole lock thing. There's some bombs, but I don't need to take them. Um, here, I'm just going to attack the side and making sure to be aware of the wall mimic there, moving away first. So the two mushrooms can be quite dangerous, so we'll take that one at a time. Standing two squares away from the armadillo and then drawing out the wall mimic. So I see two golems approaching here, so we're going to attack until he starts crouching and then move back. Stall a beat there and move further back. So there, I didn't need to move back for the um, uh, guards because they both had 
uh, enemies behind them, which actually stops them from being sent backwards. So we'll push that armadillo away, and then back it once more, stall to kill that guy, and then hit the next floor. So on this floor I'm looking over to the side, um, there's a combo of enemies here, so we'll just quickly take up the um, armoured skeleton and then use the wall stalling method to take out the other one. There I took a bit of damage there um, from the, those pesky blue mushrooms, uh, I didn't notice that the, um, the spores were just, they were sort of hidden by the, the lack of light, so that's an issue there, so uh, my mistake. Um, I don't know why I got the diamonds there, but uh, fair enough. Um, I'm delaying seeing the line of sight of the armadillo because I don't want him to come up too soon. Um, I'm just going to avoid that uh, staff there and quickly take out the golem. Yeah, I, I feel like it's best to demonstrate the um, this uh, this run with uh, just the dagger because if you can do it with the dagger, you can do it with anything pretty much. So we'll walk towards that. Uh, mage, um, this is a difficult situation because the uh, the mushroom is really annoying, but the clone is also there. So we're just going to jump back and forth and kill the mushroom, and then the go uh, the mole, sorry. And we've got enough time to take out all those enemies without having to retreat. But I was keeping in my mind that retreating was always an option if needed. Um, yeah, so a lot of a lot of stuff happened there. I took out the mage and then started chipping away at the golem. Um, and I'm leaving the mini boss till last. Uh, there's a chest hidden there. Um, so with the bats, you do want to be careful. Um, I once again I discussed how to take them out in my uh, Zone One tutorial video. You just got to play it very safe and wait until you move towards each other at the same time. Uh, and that's that one. Uh, there's a potion here. Uh, just demonstrating that. Uh, I, yeah, don't need to take it. And Zone Three. So Black Mage. We're just gonna move back and let him pull, him, pull us back towards him. Um, I am leaving that mushroom there. Um, you don't need to take out all the enemies. I feel like with the bounce trap there it's very dangerous. Um, so we're just going to come behind below it and take it out there. Once again moving back, staying patient. Um, that guy came out of nowhere but we have enough time to take him out and the bounce trap uh, allows us to realign and carry on so we'd have to keep running all the way down the corridor. That's one thing that they can take a long time if they're charging. Slowly chipping away at the golem, remembering to move back when he crouches, and we can take out the skeleton against the wall. Another purple mushroom, just move back and forward and hit it twice there. And the armadillo, and uh, take out the white using the wall stalling method, and then uh, the mage, and finally hitting the um, armor skeleton from the side. Um, yeah, moving away from the mage is another way of dealing with that. Um, and remembering that the um, tar monsters, once you come close to them, you have to move back. Uh, so there's two of them right there. So we'll do that twice. Uh, and then take up the mole and the bat. Um, that honestly just looks like a terrible situation with the mud and the mushrooms. This is just a really, really horrible situation. So that's why I retreat. Um, we'll take out the mage first and then the skeleton. And then from this spot, I know that only one of the mushrooms will be able to hit me, so I can take them out one at a time. And just remember, as soon as they start shaking, just drop back. Um, it's it's always worse. Well, um, it's always worse to take damage than to uh, retreat and take your time. Okay, so now we have the death metal fight. Um, so this one, I'm not going to take out the clones. I'm just going to rush straight for the side and now make a beeline for the for death metal himself. Using the balance pads can give you an extra turn. Um, if you get to him quick enough, you won't spawn anything, which is sort of the ideal thing. And then you're moving away when he stays still for the breathe and fire attack. And then you just have to run up to him and kill him on the side. So that brings us to the end of the Zone 2 tutorial. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've learned something. If you have, feel free to drop a like and comment. Um, and um, subscribe if you want to see more uh, similar content. I will start working on the Zone 3 video soon after this. Hopefully that won't take as long to upload as this one did. But thank you for all your support on the Zone 1 video. Reading the comments really helps um, with motivation to make more of these, so thank you. And that's all I have to say, so I will see you next time. Ta-ta for now.